Aircraft carriers are widely considered the most breathtaking of ships with their ominous appearance and sheer maritime and aerial might. So much so, the mere dropping of their anchor is an impressive display of power. Recently released footage from the U.S. Navy minutely shows the detailed process of dropping the colossal anchor of its mightiest class of carriers, the Nimitz. Each individual high-strength steel link weighs as much as 136 pounds, and the entire chain is 1,440 feet long. Performing this task requires demanding training and diligent execution, and there are two possible methods of manipulation. The safest is powering down the anchor, but the fastest, yet more dangerous, is to allow the massive head to fall freely into the water. A symbolic role. After the first aircraft landing on a moving ship over a century ago, ships have become increasingly specialized. Initially, barges, tankers, and decommissioned battleships were converted into aircraft carriers. But after World War II, their design and technology evolved tremendously. Today, aircraft carriers have a growing importance in naval missions, with 44 active ships around the world by 2021. Remarkably, the U.S. Navy remains the largest operator of the type, with no less than a fourth of the global fleet. The status of the aircraft carriers as the largest warships in the U.S. Navy gives them a symbolic role, not only as a deterrent to the enemies, but also as a diplomatic tool to strengthen relations with the nation's allies. Their mere presence in international task forces usually facilitates communication and interaction. Out of 11 carriers in the Navy's inventory, 10 belong to the Nimitz class, named after the U.S. Fleet Commander Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, the last living Navy officer to hold that rank. With a length of over a thousand feet and a full load displacement of over a hundred thousand long tons, the Nimitz class ships were the largest in service until their successor, USS Gerald R. Ford, entered the fleet in 2017. Nevertheless, the Nimitz class ships will likely remain the superstars of the Navy for the foreseeable future but operating the second largest carriers in the world remains a dangerous task. A resistive force. When it comes to maneuvering the ships, anchors play a critical role. To keep an entire vessel in place and aid them in safely docking at ports on the high seas, a heavyweight known as the anchor head provides the main resistive force. But as technology has advanced and ships have become larger, ever heavier anchors have been pressed into service. From the times of the ancient Greeks, the windlass system of pulleys has been used to shift large weights. A simple idea consists of a barrel wound with a chain or cable using a belt or crankshaft, providing a circular motion that can lift considerable weight. A crank can be manual or motorized, but the main concern is that a considerable amount of strain is placed on the cable or chain. If the mechanism has to be stopped halfway through the operation, there's a possibility the line could break under tension. As such, the process requires undivided attention and care, as well as thorough work. Small crafts do not require a windlass, while medium-sized ships do. Moreover, large ships demand higher precision, and the anchors are given an exclusive system. The setup covers the functions of releasing, holding, and manipulating the anchor chain. And as depicted in footage released by the U.S. Navy, the chain is made up of metal links that fit onto notches or grooves on the central barrel. The windlass then releases the links gradually. An anchor. Whenever pier docking is not possible, aircraft carriers have to drop their anchors, and the crew must gauge the water depth beforehand to ensure the line can reach the seabed. Sometimes the water is too shallow for the huge vessels to dock properly. Moreover, the chain and anchor have to be rinsed from salt water, reducing the risk of corrosion and the growth of microorganisms. Using the windlass system, the crew can release and heave up the 30,000-pound anchor and steel chain. The powered option employs the windlass to slowly revolve in a direction that pays out the chain. And when the markers indicate the required length has been reached, the crank operator can apply a braking action. As such, the falling anchor head doesn't suddenly exert a significant force on the hull. Still, having to crank the winch is a relatively slow process. The freefall option is considerably faster, 
but it offers no control whatsoever, and there's little to do to determine where and how the anchor will hit the water. There's a chance the falling weight can cause a minor flooding of the deck, or even large oscillations that could pose a problem to the ship's stability. Crew members then manipulate the hand wheel next to the Wildcat, which acts as the windlass brake, and when everything is ready, the crew of the massive aircraft carrier drops the equally massive anchor and chain to secure the vessel in place and conduct operations. Snatch The Nimitz-class aircraft carriers use a steam-powered catapult system to help launch the aircraft, the Catabar. The system is able to catapult the aircraft off to 170 miles per hour in under two seconds and includes arrestor wires for launch and recovery. The carrier has angled flight decks for improved performance, and the catabar arrangement further speeds up operations. With four catapult tracks, the ship can launch aircraft within 20 second intervals. Besides, the technology allows for a wider variety of aircraft than with the STOVL used on smaller ships. An embarked carrier air wing of up to 90 aircraft is usually deployed on board. But while the air wing strike fighters are primarily FA-18E and FA-18F Super Hornets, the aircraft carrier can accommodate several types. One of them is the Northrop Grumman E-2C Hawkeye early warning and control aircraft used to identify and provide positional data of incoming threats. The aircraft have to land at full throttle so that they can take off immediately in case they fail to snatch the arresting wire. Then, after landing, chains and tie-down devices secure the aircraft to the floor. As for weaponry, the video shows how the Ordnance men prepare the 510-pound Vietnam-era GBU aerial laser-guided bombs to be loaded. The staff in red uniforms are responsible for any munition-related tasks aboard the carrier, like installing the tail fin to the bomb in the weapons magazine. Still, the presence of nuclear weapons in U.S. aircraft carriers after the Cold War has been neither confirmed nor denied by the government. Consequently, the mere presence of U.S. carriers in foreign ports may be triggering for the locals. In 2007, Nimitz visited Chennai, India, giving way to local protests. But then Strike Group Commander Rear Admiral John Terence Blake simply stated, quote, The U.S. policy is that we do not routinely deploy nuclear weapons on board Nimitz. Combat Time the U.S. Navy video shows how the FARP crew transfers the munition to the aircraft. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, a forward area refueling point, or FARP, is, quote, a temporary facility organized, equipped, and deployed to provide fuel and ammunition necessary for the employment of aviation maneuver units in combat. In other words, FARP is a NATO term describing a position where aircraft can resupply at a closer distance from their area of operations. They are temporary, transitory facilities that are closer to the battlefield than the main operating base. During sustained operations, the reduced distance allows a faster turnaround time, thus increasing combat time. FARPs are typically used if the forward edge of the battle zone is highly mobile or in case there's a high threat from enemy aircraft or artillery. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoy military developments and operations, Make sure to subscribe to Dark Footage and all our Dark Documentaries channels. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.